Problem 37 in Klein, second um, edition chemistry textbook, we've got to identify the number of stereoisomers. So again, what we do is we um, identify a stereogenic center. A stereogenic center is a carbon that contains four groups, and we count up all of the stereogenic centers, and uh, it's going to be equal to 2 to the nth. So let's take a look at problem A. This carbon here has four groups, this carbon here has four groups, and this carbon here has four groups. Because it has three stereocenters, the maximum number of stereoisomers we would expect is two to the third, which is um, eight. In this next molecule, uh, we only have two stereogenic centers. The maximum possible we would expect to find is uh, four. In this molecule here, we've got one, two, three, four different uh, stereogenic centers. So two to the fourth is going to be equal to um, 16. In molecule D, we have two stereocenters. So there's going to be four possible here. In problem E, I copied this incorrectly. There's two methyl groups on that carbon. Uh, that is not a stereocenter because um, it does not have four different groups attached to that carbon. So what we have are just two stereocenters for a maximum total of four stereoisomers that we would expect. In molecule F, we have a similar situation as with E. Let's take a look. So we've got a stereogenic center here here, 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 but not at the end. An isopropyl group does not contain a stereocenter because this is a methyl group and this is a methyl group. And we don't um, identify four different groups attached to that carbon. So this is 2 to the 5th, which is equal to 32. Okay, so count the stereocenters and calculate 2 to the nth. That's the maximum number you would expect. Yes, some of them could be meso or have weird structures that cause that total number of stereoisomers to be left, but two to the nth is kind of the first thing you do to calculate.